So today we're focused on doing a matrix map. Have any of you run into matrix mapping before? But you've done SWOT analysis, some of you, right? Okay. I'm going to describe it as, go over it as your book describes it, then I'm going to connect it to doing a SWOT analysis. Because to do a good SWOT analysis, what is the good of identifying the strengths and weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats, unless you can analyze that situation and decide strategically what to do with that. So if you look in your book, starting on page 144, they talk about the fact that you're deciding what you're going to do, where you're going to go. Right now, I trust that all of you are in the process of pulling together all your data. You've, you've either done your interviews or you're going to be, or you're in the process of it. You have completed surveys that you're going to do. You've got background information. So you, get a, you have a, a sense of where your agency is uh, as far as financially, as far as its expertise in the field. Definitely, definitely started with the mission and, and the vision. And you have a sense of the values of the organization. You have all of that going for you. And actually, one of the things that uh, Scott was talking about is in his interview, he's going to essentially use the SWOT concept, which really works if you have a forum or something, where you go through and say, OK, what are our strengths based on what we know about who we are? What are our strengths? Where are we weak within the organizations? Externally, what are some of the things happening around that give us opportunity to grow and develop and become stronger? What are some threats that we see that would keep us from be growing and becoming stronger? It might even threaten our current, um, our, our current status. So you can conduct that. And as a result of everything you've gathered, you can come up with a list of possible initiatives. And on page 145, your book indicates an organization that came up with a list of possible changes, oh, I guess it's on 147, that they would be thinking about for this community center. And they said, all right, where does it fit as far as these are priorities we're thinking about may have come from the result of having a community meeting and have the community identify the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats may have come from the community saying, we really need. And over and over again, and you may, those of you in the afternoon class, may hear yet today, what are we going to do about our roads if we're looking at our community? What are we going to do about our access to services for youth? What are we going to do about transportation needs? Yeah, these are common, common concerns. And to plan it strategically, you come up with a list. And this community on page 147 came up with, the community center came up with a list of possible initiatives. And they evaluated it based on, make sure I do this right. Sometimes I get things backwards. How much impact that that would have on serving the mission of the community center. They also, because they have to, I'm, uh, they have to uh, make ends meet, decide how it fits with pro profitability. And this is what some organizations would call identifying low-hanging fruit. They'd be looking for those projects that have both high impact, that means really supporting the mission statement, high impact in supporting the mission statement, and high profitability. Now, there are a lot of 
times you'll look at an organization and you'll say, hey, how does that really, really impact Okay, I can't draw. How does that really impact the organization? And they'll say, oh, but it helps us bring in the dollars. And it doesn't go against our mission. It just might not be high impact in supporting our mission other than the fact that it gives us dollars. So you'll see more and more organizations that have fundraisers. How does a fundraiser help your organization's mission? It does raise people's awareness. When you start fundraising, everybody knew about what was happening at Boys and Girls Club when they did that mega fundraiser. What was it, just last year or year before? And it was to the point where, I think it was year before, that they actually were targeted the farmers because it was a good year to, as they were uh, bringing in their grains, actually giving handouts, consider, giving part of your profits to Boys and Girls Club. Found that rather, uh, what's the word for it? Um, bold of them. Because they were just going out and asking everybody, especially end of the year, you have anything at the end of the year? You need a tax break? You can use us as your tax break. We need your dollars. This is what we need it for. And they succeeded. And people are more aware of the Boys and Girls Club because not only, yes, they're aware of the services they provide, but because they're out in the community saying, support us, support us. Even though they're not in doing that fundraising, the actual process of fundraising does not have direct impact on their mission. It's how they use the funds. So if all they did was gather funds, they wouldn't. Sometimes, Hope a Mountain right now has a Christmas gift basket that they have out. It's all web-based to help raise funds for uh, some of the initiatives at Hope a Mountain. Gift baskets, how do they impact? Well, they are choosing uh, products that are in congruence with their mission. They're working with organizations whose missions, whose purposes, themselves are in congruence with the Hope About and mission, but really the selling of it does not impact the program. It's whatever profit, it's not going to be a lot of profit, but whatever profit, it will help strengthen Hope. But the added advantage is what David said was visibility. It does raise visibility. Okay, so that is low impact, high profitability, but there are also um, services that might be offered that, boy, they really impact your mission, but they don't, they're not profitable. In fact, they might even be an expense to the organization, such as I mentioned the food bank in Haver. It's actually food bank, uh, the HRDC in Haver, that is the parent organization for the food bank, not only doesn't get a profit, but they actually use what little discretionary money they have, a portion of it goes to the food bank. And they don't have ongoing funders. They, they accept donations and a lot of volunteer help. And of course, occasionally they'll get a grant. And for the last number of years, thank goodness, uh, Town Pump has been committed to uh, matching funds whatever the community gives, they will match for food pantries, and so they will get that money. So, but it is very, very low profitability, and in fact, possibly negative profitability, but it is right with the mission statement. Because they are there to help individuals, what they say is to help, themse help themselves, but essentially address immediate needs so that they can be empowered to address longer term needs. But then the third one is not, not profitable and low impact as well. And that's where your book puts on a stop sign.
So if people are saying, hmm, we really think that, what was something you could ask of HRDC, where it really, really might not impact the emission much and it would cost them, cost them money. Um, if they want to, they don't. Counseling or something like that. Okay, yeah. Because, uh, to have, to have a, well, yeah, go ahead. You were saying maybe a counseling program. And it might be one if it were job readiness, but if it is simply was to be there open to everybody in the community to come and get counseling, that would impact the mission, but not a lot, but boy, would it be expensive uh, unless they had a funding source. But uh, one, of the, one of the examples I can think of was earlier this semester, I made a reference to Hopa Mountain where the um, Special Olympics had written to them and asked for funds to expand into another area. And on the surface, you might say, hey, that fits with what HOPA does. But HOPA is all about, really all about empowerment. And they said, funding an outside agency to go into a community to sponsor an activity does not meet with the mission. And, of course, it would be an expense, too. So it would be negative prob uh, profitability and negative on the impact on the mission. So I have tr a hard time thinking of examples with HRDC, even though I worked with them for 14 years, is because if it doesn't have a really strong connection to the mission, they can't afford to pursue it. And I probably don't hear about it. There was a question when they decided to do the low-income housing that they have because they have always been about skill building and helping people move ahead. Housing was not historically a part of what they looked at, but when they looked at their mission and what the mission of community action agencies, of which they are a part, they realized that housing is a huge issue and it's a huge issue. Affordable housing is a huge issue in Haver. And anybody who rents housing knows getting something affordable is not easy. And so, uh, and it was low-income senior housing. They took, a, they surveyed and realized that there really was very little available for seniors who wanted independent, who were still healthy for independent living that had, that were renting. And so they really looked hard at it and they, said, okay, it does impact the mission. Uh, and, but there were some people who said the impact was not as high as other programs. Profitability meant it was, they decided it was a risk, but it, potential profitability. And they decided to go with it. I'm not quite sure where they would have put it on the chart, but it probably would have been more towards the center than specifically in one box or another. So I'm gonna use, I've used those examples. Going back to your book examples, the community center in your book had four possibilities. One was renting uh, space from the community center to community groups such as Alcoholics Anonymous and Girl Scouts, basketball leagues, and others. Uh, home ownership and loan renovation program to be able to house that there, and it's, a, it's funded by the federal government a stop smoking, a smoking cessation program, and a fundraising dinner. And as they analyzed it, they realized that renting the building, have any of you worked for nonprofits where, or groups where you needed to use a, rent a room somewhere and finding an affordable room? How was that? And it's usually what, 50, 70, between 50 and $75 a day sometimes more, right? And if you're Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Where are you going to meet? Um, what they're saying is even renting it, you can't charge very much. And yet you still have to have custodial staff. You still have to have the lighting. You still have to have the room heated. So it costs the association. Actually, at HRDC, their community room is available for anybody 
that's a nonprofit. So if you were Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts looking for a place to meet it, you might consider it. And because it's going to be one of those things that's got the heart in it. Very low pro uh, profitability in the case of HRDC, no profitability. In the case of what's in your book, they're saying, oh, you know, they're not going to charge very much. They're not going to see any net gain from that. But they're going to do it because it fits their mission of reaching out to community. And uh, you said, it, David, you nodded that you've had that experience. What group were you working for and what did you find? We found uh, places like uh, when I was at FBCC. Okay, Flathead Valley, yeah. Flathead Valley Community College is that they don't have a gym. On yes. Campus. And so, but there's intramural programs. And so, <clears throat> like basketball and volleyball and things like that. And the nearby schools, the, the two high schools, had facilities, but they wanted to charge. Uh -huh. So, we ended up finding a school that was willing to give us the facility, you know, the basketball court and everything, uh, free of charge, but it was a further distance away. So it was you know, risk versus gain, convenience, and things like that, but obviously we went with the, the school that was willing to offer the yeah. facilities at no cost. Because in, in your case, you were looking for a gym facility to have your intramurals. It sure would have been nice if it were nearby but it's not affordable. And when we think about it, yes, most places, if they're gonna rent out their gym, they're gonna get a cleaning staff in to clean up after you. And my experience talking to the custodians here after a game, it takes hours and hours, multiple people hours and hours to clean up after a game. And of course that gym floor has to be really clean. You don't need a slick mark if you're gonna have somebody playing ball of any sort on that thing. So that that cost, then they usually want at least to have those costs covered. A um, lot of, because there is only one gym here on this campus, that's a common story because you've got basketball, volleyball, um, women's basketball, men's basketball, volleyball, and several other programs part-time, but those three programs using the gym absolutely every day for hours. And so they oftentimes have to rent the gym at, from St. Jude's. And I don't know how much they pay, but if you don't have a big bank account, it's going to be, it's, it's going to, might be prohibitive. I don't think St. Jude's uh, charges that much, but still, it's, it's got to be factored in. So, in the case of what's in your book, upper left quadrant, low probability, high impact for using your community center. But the other one is home ownership loan. It's a grant funded project. Money's going to come in. And what a nice boon to have that because it is a high impact for the community. I am assuming there is interest, but it's also federally funded, so it's gonna pay its way and it's going to help with the infrastructure of the uh, community center because it's going to be using the community center and also paying its way. So it will help pay for the cost of administration, help pay for the cost of utilities and maintenance. The third, so that would go in the upper right quadrant is the star, high profitability, high impact to mission. The, third one they mentioned was a smoking cessation program. And I kept on saying, why is that not of concern to the community and a community center? And what they said in your book was, well, there's no interest in it. They can hold it, but nobody comes. They can hold it and hold that program, but there's not going to be any income associated with it and nobody comes. And if that's the case, it's going to have very low impact, not because of what its purpose is, but because there's a low interest. And so that's low impact, low profitability. It falls under the stop sign. You don't even want to consider it. And then finally, the fundraising. I'm going to erase my little icon I put there. In your book, they have a tree with dollar signs hanging down. 
in what we what I'll show you in a minute it's more like an, a lightning like something to infuse funding into your program and in this case it is as I said the fundraising any question about what this does and how you might use it when you do your findings consider whether or not using a matrix to analyze it would be helpful uh, before I go further I want to use Okay, I'm going to use the community toolbox. If you look under, remember I told you to look at, I think it is section 13 of, okay, no, it's not there. No. Oh, because I'm here. Uh, this is um, under the assessment, under the SWOT analysis of Chapter 3 of the Community Toolbox, I'll go up here a little bit and make sure I identify. It is Section 14, SWOT analysis. And they go back through what a SWOT analysis is. It's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and strengths. And once you have identified the strengths, opportun uh, weaknesses, opportunities, and strengths, then they tell you to get a grid together. There you go and play one against the other. If your strength is, as they show here, okay, they don't list what the strengths are. Uh, you take the strengths and compare it to the opportunities. How can you use your strengths or the opportunities to, to pull them together to take advantage of the opportunities using your strengths so that you can build your program? How can you use your strengths to help avoid the threats that you have identified or overcome or work around the threats? How can you use your, uh, your opportunities then to overcome weaknesses? And how can you use this knowledge about threats and weaknesses, knowing about it, to plan around and minimize the impact of combining the fact that you have a threat that plays to your weaknesses but you know about it so in what way can you beef up and avoid the strengths I mean avoid the threat so the example and as I said this comes from the community toolbox it says Here's an example for Campbell Soup Company that stresses financial goals, but it also illustrates how you can use a SWOT grid. They did an analysis of strengths had to do with current profit ratio, employee morale was high, market share has increased. These are the strengths. The opportunity is with Western European unification. This is a couple of years ago and the rising health consciousness and demands for soup increasing annually. The opportunities has to do with acquiring a food company in Europe and developing new healthy soups because there's more interest, there's a broader market, there's an opportunity to expand. However, there are the, like, the weaknesses include they have legal suits not resolved, plant capacity has fallen, and a lack of strategic management. And so they have to use their opportunities to overcome some of the weaknesses and they have suggestions about essentially because it says plant capacity is falling to develop new prod, uh, products that would not impact that need for that particular plant and also oh and lack of strategic management system uh, to focus on strategic management to be able to do that. The threats they mention are the low value of the dollar internationally and the fact that Campbell's soup, if you go back 10 years, was really, really um, can-oriented. Have you noticed how that's changed? And so the threat is the fact that, you know, people don't want more waste. So how about developing more bio biodegradable soup containers and there may be the weaknesses is 
if the low dollar value is such that you might even want to close. Now, under opportunities to possibly acquire a new food company in Europe, the, but if with, a low, with the value of the dollar being low and with there being legal suits and, <coughs> and lack of strategic planning, they, also, they might consider actually not having their European operations based on other situations. These are the things that they need to take into consideration. Okay. So this is how they have taken their SWOT analysis and then they move it to a matrix. And, oh, they don't have it. And with that matrix, you can end up by actually, but they do have a matrix, but actually determining then going to the matrix here. where each of those suggested actions fit on this table here. Okay. So you have a list of po potential actions that come from taking your uh, strengths and opportunities, your strengths and your weaknesses, your, strength, or your threats and your opportunities, your threats and your weaknesses, and think about possible actions and then put it on the map matrix and see where it fits. So, one of the things I want to do to share with you today and if you want to see more of this, whoops, yep, more of this uh, later I can show it with you. This came from the assessment class six years ago we were lucky enough to have a group of on-site students who were on campus, so they had the ability to focus and do activities on campus. At the same time, this was, I made reference to this before, there were concerns about sub-use expressed by the students. They didn't feel a connection with the sub, and this had happened actually the year previous. This was a continuation on some some background research other classes had done. And so this class decided they wanted to take a closer look, they wanted to analyze it more completely, and they came up with um, surveys which they gave to over 200 students. They also came up with interviews of administrators, and they did quite a bit of background information to figure out what the strengths were of the sub, what what were the concerns as far as weaknesses, the opportunities that were there, and the threats. And as a result of the SWOT analysis, they came up with the fact that students are looking for a warm inviting area that includes a snack bar and a study area and a television lounge. And this is what the survey came up with. So I said, I thought it was a couple hundred, maybe it was, I'm trying to add everything up. Um, it was more like 500, closer to 500 surveys. And how students responded, asked a number of questions. Some of them were closed ended where they had yes, no, and they could, you know, you can an analyze it by, by number and some of it was open ended. And they were asked to rate each aspect of the services offered at the sub. And there were an awful lot of, of students who didn't know some of the services that were there. But as a result, you can see they didn't know about certain things, but there's background information. If I go down here, Here's the SWOT analysis by the students. And the students are saying the strength is over the last year, the food has improved. There's more availability of resources. The bookstore is a strength. Uh, the fact that there are healthy vegetables out. You can see that long list of different things they found strong, but they were concerned about food service hours being very limited. 
and that there isn't a lot of interaction. Even, especially then, there was not much interaction. It was almost like going to a tomb. When you went out. Remember? Were you here then? Yeah, it's almost like a tomb going to the sub. And that's the feedback they were giving, given. The services were not advertised. <laughs> a lot of problems with students who were living in the residence hall not having food to eat, and even students who were coming up onto campus wanting to be able to eat, and you almost had to have a food plan. It was very expensive. There was no a la carte. And so this, is, this, was, came, this was a raw or the analysis from the survey. This is what they said as far as opportunity. Um, they saw students were suggesting that money could be raised, that there were get outside businesses and communities to support it. They saw the opportunities to build on that. They also saw the fact that there were, they called fast food joints, um, there were places in town for st that students have gotten used to going to, especially those with transportation. They, uh, this is student talk. There, there were outside businesses that there were a lot of students who were not interested in staying in the, uh, in the uh, sub and they even, some of it being judgmental, students would much rather spend time in the bars. Okay. So, but as a result of that, the class analysis said, now that didn't come up on the student list, but the students decided that based on analyzing what the survey said, and they also infused some of their own insights. I probably should have stopped some of that, but anyway. They said the student senate was not involved. They needed the student senate to be more involved with the sub and getting students involved with the sub that many students see the sub in a negative light, that students want to be more involved in running it, that it's underutilized, okay? A number of those statements. But then again, the students also analyze the results of um, talking to staff and administration. And the strengths they had were that there were more students, on campus than there had been the previous year, that, um, that there was strong collaboration with the foundation and, and alumni fundraising that had not been, the sub had not yet tapped into, or I guess they had because it was a strength. Um, and that Northern had new administration on, um, at the sub, and as they listed, according to the staff, here it is, you know, we still have our pin and queue, we still have our recreation possibilities. The staff are saying that, but the students aren't saying that. Where's the insight with that comes with that list of, of strengths? And weaknesses. Oh, they didn't list weaknesses, but opportunities, they said they saw opportunities for fundraising, the fact that Northern had a new president uh, six years ago. Who was that? Um, Increases in student life activities, increases in student retention, strong passion to improve the sub. So he's, they're, they're saying, yes, there's buy-in on campus to improve the, the sub. That's a good external factor because you can get that infrastructure support for the sub. And as a result, and this is why I'm, one of the reasons I did that, as a result, they did a matrix map. And I'm showing this because I want to show you how they've taken one thing and then superimposed it. The one thing they were hearing, whether it was they used that word or not, students were saying, and staff were saying, we need to improve the atmosphere. Students were saying that we need better access to food. Students were saying, we don't know what's where. Students were saying, the sub isn't open enough. They were saying, we want the Student Senate to be more involved. So was the staff saying that. Staff was saying, we want the Student Senate to be more involved. We want students to be, more students to participate. And they saying, as you went down, everybody was saying, you go down to the sub and 
the ballroom would be empty, the fireside room would be empty, you go down into the basement, it would be empty, empty, empty. And they said, we need to look at room usage. So upon analyzing that, at least at that time, the students decided based on the business model and on talking to people, so you have to take this is why this is under business model, decided that the easy thing to do would to really work with the student senate because the student senate was not all that involved, but there was an element of student senate that was interested in working with the staff. And part of that was to encourage them to work together to get more participation, more involvement, more of the students have more of a voice. Okay? They decided that was going to be a lot easier than some of the other things. They decided that the biggest, biggest concern was lack of hours, for, especially for eating. And when they started looking at it, or it was suggested as a concern, but it was going to cost so much money. And even though people said they wanted more hours, they didn't indicate that they were willing to put the effort into expanding hours. And so it went into the low impact, low, vi uh, low viability, and that was actually put on a stop sign. You know, they're not going to work on that. Instead they said, let's work on student senate involvement, student participation, but also at the same time, even though it will cost money, even though it, it, it will not help as far as viability, it will actually be a challenge via, as far as viability, we need to put the emphasis on improving the atmosphere, improving this, uh, making a snack bar, and improving awareness of the sub. And can you see how we got to that, we being the, the, the class? Okay. This is something that might really work with your project if you use your SWOT and then superimpose it to come up with things to be done. So you get a, a list of, of ways, according to your analysis, ways in which uh, the service can be improved, enhanced, initiated, whatever you're, you're going to be suggesting as a result of your needs analysis, and then superimposing it on, onto a matrix map to see what's viable. I will put this particular um, matrix map up on the website for anyone who would like to see it. Would you like me to also put the this class study up there? It's a flawed study, but it's, a, it's good, but it's not perfect. So, uh, but I'll put it up because that'll give you an idea of what a classroom of students working together studying the same thing you've been studying can come up with. Yeah. And none of them have, had ever done anything like this before. Huh. All right, I will do that. By the way, interested in knowing the difference now? Yes. So one thing that could uh, maybe help this is to put graphics, pictures. Yes. To show um, the, um, the, the fireside room or whatever in a normal day, like it's empty. And, so okay. And that wouldn't go on this as much as the overall report. So you're talking about having more graphics. This particular class didn't do that, but another class, the previous semester's class, had a lot of pictures and had worked with layout and had done a lot of building the visual, which made a, a big difference. I was pleased to know that even though this, whatever this, our classes did and only occasionally would they come, were, did we get feedback that their work made a difference? I was able to see even at least indirectly every time students took an initiative on like this that the stakeholders involved started talking more. And in almost every case there was a big change. So one of the uh, results of this survey actually that made a difference and uh, you could see it for at least five years, I don't know that it's up there anymore, but if you go back to, oh, it's not here, it's on the other document, because that's the, we go back to the top, 
There was no mission and vision for the sub before, and the students worked with the stakeholders to come up with, students, faculty, students and staff mostly, to come up with a mission statement. And they drafted it based on what they heard, not what they wanted to say. They brought it back to the stakeholders, got feedback, tweaked it some more, and actually they didn't take it back. They invited the stakeholders to meet with the class and to make comments. They tweaked it some more, sent it around so more stakeholders got to see it, listened to comments, came back, and they, they revised it. There were a couple students in class. Their eyes were starting to cross how many times that was revised. But it had to be revised and revised in order for those involved to say, yeah, that's us. Yes, we own it. And uh, the, the staff at the sub were so pleased with it, they had it printed up and they had it posted for, as I said, for five years. This is who we are. So uh, it can make a difference even when it's a class project. <laughs> it can make a, a, a pretty good difference. Oh, I want to go back to this. And to go back to, no, it's down here. To go back to this matrix, it may not be great, but the atmosphere is a lot better than it was six years ago. It may not be exactly what we want, but there was no snack bar six years ago. At this point, you can go into the cafeteria and you can choose what you want to eat and you pay for what you want to eat. It costs too much, but at least you can do that, right? People are more aware. One of the things that came in, and it wasn't directly related to this, but it was part of it, the same stakeholders were involved, where they were able to get the exercise equipment in the basement, so the basement is being used more. They repurposed, didn't totally change the purpose, but they looked for new opportunity to infuse purpose into the, uh, the, use, of, the use of the basement space. So the room usage has, has improved significantly. At this point, you have to schedule your time in the fireside room because chances are if you don't, somebody, some other group will have that. Student Senate has been more active. Student participation, while it's not ideal, it's better. And sure enough, even though where we said stop, can't do that, there's no funds, everybody said no way, never will be any way, the hours have increased, not, not as much as we would like. But people can go in and access the building after 5 o'clock. There's somebody around on the weekends. Uh, maybe not great hours, but it's better than it was. Pardon me? I think so. I, I know by dropping in, I, I didn't double check with Steve Wise, even though I saw him yesterday. Um, he was trying to make sure that the sub was accessible to students on a holiday, uh, even though the staff was around. So he was out sweeping the the walkway and turning on the lights and making it accessible. So, you know, it has improved and it improved through this kind of effort. All right, any questions about process and matrix map? I won't be coming back explicitly for this, but we'll, as we're talking about how to take your information that you're gathering now, we talk about processing that. When I make reference to a matrix map, uh, hopefully you will know what I'm talking about, but ask me specific questions as it applies to you. Also, it's chapter three, section 14 in the community toolbox. It go goes back over how to analyze your findings if you do a SWOT analysis. And it's just uh, an easy step to then plug it into a matrix map. Okay. So 